And so, WandaVision came to an epic, if unsurprising, conclusion in this week's series finale. After last week's stock take episode, the finale had a lot of loose ends to tie up, and it really didn't waste any time cutting straight to the action. It was great to finally see Agatha cut loose this week, and Catherine Hahn was allowed to let go and go super over the top. They even had time to sneak in a Wizard of Oz easter egg reference, which I appreciated. So, onto the big reveals for the week. White Vision made his grand entrance, as formerly MCU Vision was reanimated, and we the audience are treated to a Smackdown brawl between Cataract and Dream Vision, both playing the real Vision, but neither one the real Vision. Dream Vision being the construct of Wanda, but possessing none of the memories of Vision before the Hex, and the White Vision Cataract being the real Vision without any memories of Wanda at all. <sighs> it was a fun comic booky setup with a pretty great brawl, with both of them phasing through one another and taking to the skies. I really like the payoff here, with Dream Vision and Cataract engaging in a battle of the minds. Dream Vision convincing Cataract he wasn't the real Vision, and probably the best representation of Vision from the comic books we've had thus far. When Dream Vision restores Cataract's memories, we essentially have the true Vision back. Although, if Vision is back, real Vision, memories, components, microchips, and backed up hard drives, why didn't he return to Wanda? I think it's because even though he now has the memories, it wasn't really him that experienced those memories. It creates an interesting discussion around experience in comparison to knowing. Just because this vision has data doesn't mean he has vision's heart or thoughts or even residual emotions that the original vision had. He doesn't even have the original memories that dream vision has inside the hex. The husband of Wanda, the father to Billy and Tommy. Whatever this new vision is, I'm sure we'll be seeing him again at some point in some fashion. Another interesting development that we saw take place this week was the reveal that Agatha's book that we've been seeing in the previous couple of episodes was in fact the Darkhold, a pretty iconic piece of lore from the Marvel comics that we've seen pop up before in both Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as used by Ada in the construction of the framework and then returned to hell by Ghost Rider before being used by Morgan Le Fay over on Runaways. So yeah, it's here now probably best to pretend those shows never happened, despite me being the only person that really did enjoy Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It really sucks that those other shows have been retconned out of existence, but here we are, the Darkhold, in the MCU, in the possession of the Scarlet Witch. If anything, for an extremely action-heavy episode, I thought that the special effects here were pretty solid. While they didn't quite hit the highs of The Mandalorian, which I consider the gold standard for special effects on TV, they were extremely impressive, with several big set pieces at play. It's hard to convey magic, but I think the show did a pretty good job of it. I really like the cinematography during the final confrontation in the clouds between Wanda and Agatha, surrounded by runes carved into the hex wall. It showed Wanda's evolution into the true Scarlet Witch, with her headdress and comic book accurate-ish costume. It had a really nice payoff to the previous eight episodes. Elizabeth Olsen has really put in her time in the MCU, dedicating years to building up this character. So seeing her finally get her big superhero moment felt like years of payoff in the making. So what didn't I love here? It kind of sucked that Pietro didn't have any real payoff here. I think pretty much anyone that was even vaguely familiar thought it was strange that Peter Evans was put into the role of Quicksilver in the MCU, but to not acknowledge the multiverse felt like a massively missed opportunity. Hell, it even felt like a bit of a troll. Like, our own knowledge was played against us. That was probably my only real complaint here. Everything else was pretty much taken care of in a fairly tidy manner. Monica Rambeau was given her action hero moment and directed towards the stars. We could theorise what the scrolls have in store for her, but... We're probably not seeing that play out until Captain Marvel 2. I think maybe the series ended a little too neatly here. Wanda's final moments with her family felt really effective, but I'm not sure we spent enough time with her children for that to really work. I think her final moments with Vision were fantastic though. When Vision asks Wanda what he is, we really get a sense of what Wanda is giving up when she brings this entire hex world down around her. 
Olsen and Bettany have been incredibly engaging throughout this entire series. And I really hope that one day, somehow, they get to end this entire universe together in this world or whatever comes next for them. In the end, Wanda came out not really looking like the villain that I thought that she was. She enslaved an entire town. And we saw just how horrific that was in this episode. When Dottie, of all people, was freed from the brainwash, she revealed that her daughter had been confined and locked in her room since the Hex was established. Even Haywood was treated like a villain, when, in actuality, he was just trying to shut down Wanda's magic. So that's my nitpicks. It certainly doesn't undo how much I really enjoyed the first seven episodes of the series. Even the eighth episode was still pretty good in retrospect. Wanda, sitting alone with the Darkhold, reading through its secrets, studying its dark magic, really seems to be setting up something big. I'm hesitant to cry multiverse, or yell about Wanda bringing mutants into the MCU, but who knows. We do know that she'll be next seen in Doctor Strange 2, Multiverse of Madness. So it will be cool seeing the Scarlet Witch and the Master of the Mystic Arts team up for whatever Sam Raimi is cooking up over in that corner of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. WandaVision was an odd and interesting experiment for Marvel to undertake. And I'm not sure that we can go along and call it formulaic anymore. If anything, this series went a long way to showing that the MCU can take on many shapes and forms. It certainly felt different, and it was a pretty big success for the comic company. But it's important to note that WandaVision was never supposed to air first. That distinction goes to Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the next series for Disney Plus to premiere. Because of the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, Falcon and Winter Soldier was delayed and WandaVision was bumped up into its place. Because of that, this series felt a little bit disconnected and distant from the events of Avengers Endgame, especially more than it was probably intended. It will be the buddy cop adventures of Sam and Bucky that will likely be exploring the fallout of the blip and the loss of Captain America, while also probably setting up a new status quo for the universe. We will certainly see very soon. All in all, I've really loved WandaVision. It's been great exploring this corner of the MCU. Hell, it's been fantastic just returning to the MCU. We live in a world where these movies have been going on for nearly 14 years at this point. That means that there are kids out there that have never not known a world without Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, or Chris Evans as Captain America. Hopefully soon, Elizabeth Olsen's Scarlet Witch will be as integral, and more importantly, as inseparable from the franchise as those two were. After WandaVision, she's certainly proved that she's capable of it. And now that we're here at the end, how did you guys feel about the series finale of WandaVision? Are you looking forward to Falcon and Winter Soldier in the coming weeks? Let me know in the comments below, and as usual, like and subscribe for more content coming soon. Later days!